morning. Good morning and welcome to the Daily Reset. This is April. We are shifting mindsets and we are going to just jump right in. One of the things I have been thinking about for a long time is uh, an idea that I want to share with you today. And since this idea came into my awareness, I have used it to study several fields. And I'm going to share particularly this one because it, they have clear data that is very chronological. So if you take American football, and so you differentiate it from soccer, soccer that is played with the legs, American football, you hold the ball and run around, bossing people around the field. So when you look at American football and you take an average game, if you take a whole season and you take an average game, you find very interesting data that each game approximates around 153 plays. Each game, no matter what side is going to win, the total number of plays in each game comes down to about 153 plays. That is over the last about 15 years, an average of 153 games, uh, plays per game. But without fail, in each of the games, especially the Super Bowl and any significant rivalry games, without fail, every single game has come down to three or four plays. In other words, each game is won on the basis of three or four plays. Three or four plays. Each game comes down to three or four plays, whether it's a game at the very first stages or when you have now whittled the weaker teams, you're dealing with the bigger teams, or it's the final, which they call the Super Bowl. It comes down to three or four plays. Each game, the whole season, who moves, who wins, who is crowned, it comes down to three or four plays. You can't tell when those plays are going to happen. You have to be ready for this play and the next one and the next one and the next one, knowing that among all these plays you are going for, there are going to be three or four plays that change everything. Just three or four plays. This year is going to be shaped by three or four moves. Your career is going to be shaped by three or four moves. You don't know when they will show up. Your week is shaped by three or four moves. Not all the 153, whatever number it is for you. It comes down to a few impactful well-timed plays but these plays you never tell when they will come you get ready for 153 plays but among these 153 there will be your three or four plays that change everything else so that's american football when you talk about soccer each game runs for about 90 minutes that is the accorded game time. But there's another parameter called play time. When you look at the English Premier League particularly and look at the play time, the average is 57 minutes. In other words, the time when the players are actually actively playing. When you distill each of those games, it comes down to two to five minutes. Who wins the game comes down to their performance, in particular impactful, two to five minutes. You have quarter two, I have quarter two, it is three months. What is your play time in the three months? You have, let's say, 90 days in quarter two. What's your play time? Because you don't get 90 minutes in a soccer game you get the play time. Your play time might, might be 70, it might be 40, it might be 50, it might be 60. 
You get 90 days, 90 calendar days in quarter two, but what is your play time? You get 24 hours in a day, but what is your play time? Do you, do you have sufficient play time to create enough room for all the moves you need, knowing that among these moves, there are going to be some three moves that will change everything for you in the course of the week, in the course of the month? What is your play time? What proportion of each of the days, each of the weeks, the entire month, each of the months in the quarter, are you showing up ready to play so that you can maximize your play time and ensure you get all your 153 plays in, knowing that ultimately, ultimately your win, your victory is going to be determined by three or four moves. What is your play time? Playtime is what creates the platform for you to play all your moves. You know from watching soccer, I'm talking now about actual soccer, that whenever there is no winner within the 90 minutes, there is given extra time. So that the extra time creates more room for more plays. Don't you wish that life gave us extra time? So that you get to the end of the month, you're like, no, I need five more days to complete January. <laughs> and then at the end of February, you're like, mm, this month is generally short. It was 28 or 29 days. I need five more days. God, please, can I have five more days? Please pause the clock <laughs> and I'll be back. We don't get extra time. The time is already fixed. And we only have three resources to work with. All our moves, or all, all our decisions, all our choices are limited to three resources. The first one is fixed time. We have the accorded time, the fixed time, 24 hours every day, but we don't get 24 hours. We operate within 24 hours, but we only get the time we use. So whether the day has 24 hours or not, you only get the time you use. That's the first resource, it is fixed. It's to what extent am I willing, how much play time am I willing to extract out of every single day will determine how much platform I'm giving myself to play all the plays I can to ensure that my three or four moves don't fall outside my play time. I have had some players playing in American soccer saying that they did not run, they did not lose the game, they just ran out of time. In other words, if instead of the game being two hours, if it had been five hours, they could have had more time for more plays and therefore get all their four winning plays. But for you and I, it is just 24 hours. Everything we need to do has to be within the 24 hours. Our play time is fixed 24 hours. How much are we going to squeeze out? Will we be able to get as much as possible within the 24? Time is the first resource. The second resource is energy. It doesn't matter how much time you have. If you have no energy, it will be wasted. If you have no energy, you will be sluggish. If you have no energy, your execution will be inadequate. It will be ineffective. It will be suboptimal. The second resource is energy. The good thing about energy is that we have control over it. The more control we have on our energy, the greater the freedom we have in deciding what level of energy we want to show up with, the greater the quality of our lives. And when we consistently show up with greater energy, with, with more aligned energy, then we are ready to utilize the third resource. The first one is time, it's fixed. We get only a certain amount of time and we have to squeeze as much playtime out of it as possible. And once we have carved out our playtime, the quality of our production is first of all dependent on the quality of energy we show up with, which sets you up for the third resource. The third of the only three resources you work with and that is attention. You can have 24 hours a day, you wake up in the morning, you are very energetic. If you are distracted, you will have wasted the first two resources. The quality of your play comes down to the intensity and clarity of your focus. How steadily are you focusing? 
How present are you at the time that you are executing? Are you leaving anything on the table or are you executing with everything that you have? Are you at home thinking about the office or are you at the office thinking about home? Are you seated in an exam room thinking about vacation? Are you on vacation thinking about the exam room? Are you seated with family thinking about your clients or seated speaking to your client thinking about your, your family? Are you in the middle of writing a report and WhatsApp is also open on the same laptop and Facebook is open? In fact, these days you open Facebook on the laptop and you also open it on the phone so that you can confirm that the update you see here is also true on this other side. So that if you see a notification on the desktop, you click on it and then you check on the phone to see whether it has disappeared. It's, I shouldn't even be laughing about this. <laughs> you have only three resources. This year, you are only going to have a limited amount of plays, just a limited number of plays. The number of plays is based on your play time. The first resource you work with is time. The play time, the more play time you get out of this quarter, out of this year, the bigger your opportunity. The, the, the wider your platform for you to succeed. Number two, your energy. Are you showing up with the energy of a follower or with the energy of a leader? Are you showing up with the energy of a warning or the energy of an example? Energy of a role model or the energy of just another body? Are you showing up with the energy of a problem solver or a problem describer? Are you showing up with sufficient energy to engage fully or are you already tired even before you take your first move? And then of course, attention. And that is, that is where the rubber meets the road. The quality of your production is 100% dependent on the quality of your attention. And the quality, not just the quality, but also the quantity, but most, most importantly, the quality, because 10 minutes of focused attention are better than three hours of distracted doubling. You only have three resources. I only have three resources, time, energy, and attention. And attention is particularly crucial when it comes to the moves that truly, truly matter. So if we commit this quarter to do work that matters, and squeeze as much time out of our day as possible, focused on doing the work that is important, and execute the work with as much energy as we can, and when we are executing, to invest as much attention as possible, our breakthrough is already guaranteed, just waiting to manifest. Our breakthrough is guaranteed. We are not waiting for the breakthrough to come. We are just waiting for time to pass for the breakthrough to be revealed because it's already secured. What are your crucial few plays? What are your crucial few moves? What are you willing to do to carve out as much play time out of every day as possible? What are you willing to do to ensure that you tune your energy up as much as possible so that every single day when you show up you show up full tank what are you willing to do to make sure that at the time you are executing your moves you are doing so with the highest intensity of attention that you are laser focused at the time when you need to execute the moves that matter are you willing to shift your mindset enough that you begin to operate in such a way that the you that you are last year would meet you today and be absolutely shocked? Are you willing to truly to shift, to shift with no reservations whatsoever? To shift to such an extent that the quality of production you have today puts to shame everything that you've done before. Because where you were yesterday is the lowest level you'll ever be and today you are willing to step higher not just to reproduce yesterday, but to produce something new. Not to protect what was happening yesterday, 
but to create new at a higher level, to transcend your own abilities because you are willing to squeeze out as much playtime as possible, to show up with as much energy as you can, and to execute with as much attention as you can. And that begins a new season of a mindset that is absolutely elevated, operating at a higher level, higher than you've ever operated before. Intentionality gives me the, the power. It gives me the power to embody the identity God designed for me. Intentionality gives me the power. It doesn't, it doesn't give me a power. It doesn't give me some power. It doesn't provide me anything, anything neutral. It gives me something very specific. It is the power. It is that specific power. We are speaking about specificity. Going beyond showing up just neutrally to showing up specifically today. How many hours of work am I looking at doing? Number two, what level of energy am I committed to operating? So that if I catch myself beginning to slump, I'm like, nope, I am operating at level eight and above. That my commitment today is level eight or level nine or level 10. Or at least commit that this morning, between now and midday, I am at level nine and 10, no matter what happens. In the afternoon, I might give myself a bit of a break, but all my moves this morning, I'm going to squeeze as much playtime out of it, operating at this level of energy and with quality of attention. The power, that is the power. Intentionality gives me the power, the power to squeeze as much playtime as possible. The power to select my energy. The power to decide my attention, the quality of my attention. It, is, it has to come to a level of specificity that it is very easy for me to measure so that it's not some nebulous power that I receive from intentionality, but I'm receiving very specific power, very clear kind of energy that I know what kind of energy I am carrying into embodiment. Embodiment is fusing this energy with who I am now to create a next level me that wasn't there yesterday. But I'm fusing me with a specific kind of power, a specific kind of focus in terms of what level of play I am showing up with, a specific kind of play that determines what kind of attention, what kind of energy, what kind of deliberateness I am coming with in terms of how I utilize three resources. So whatever power that you presume you will receive today, if it doesn't lead you to utilize the three resources in an intentional way, it is not intentionality driven power. If it's driven by intentionality, if it's going to lead you in a direction, giving you directionality, if it's going to lead you to action, giving you actionality, if it's going to manifest as a reality in your life, then it must be very specific. It is the power, the power to do what? The power to act how? The power to accomplish what? The, uh, the power to adopt what kind of mindset? Intentionality gives me, it gives you the power to embody the identity God designed for me, for you. Intentionality gives take you in a specific direction. It leads you to take specific actions. It pursues a specific reality. So that if that reality is not manifested, then you know tomorrow you have more work to do to continue pursuing that reality. And the more that reality is aligned with the identity God designed for you, then you know for sure you are going in the direction of the identity God designed for you. You are taking specific actions that lead in that direction and that the reality of that direction can be witnessed by everything that is happening every single day. How you use your time, how you use your energy, most importantly, how 
you invest your attention day in, day out. Squeezing out the most amount of playtime out of every single day exercising your execution with such a high level of energy intentionally and always being at your best in terms of attention at the time of execution because your three or four moves are dependent on how you utilize these three resources time energy and attention specificity going beyond nebulous goals nebulous intentions to being as specific as possible and this is meant to set you up today to do your daily reset with a level of specificity you have never done this is the end of and in your daily reset it needs to be as specific as possible if it's not you are diluting the power of intentionality so that you can begin to truly operate like a leader, a role model, and a problem solver out of intentionality. And you show up ready to utilize your time, energy, and attention at the highest level, truly showing up as a commander, commanding your actions and acting with boldness, moving in the direction of the vision that you have aligned with the identity that God designed for you and today I would like you to open your chat box right now open your chat box based on everything we have spoken about based on what we have spoken about I would like your response to this question the agreement of the week is do not take anything personally what does this mean to you what does this mean to you I need your response to be less than 10 words it needs to be something specific. And this is how we begin to practice that specificity. But do not take anything personally to me, to you as an individual. This means, what does this mean? Go to your chat box. You, you can't get this wrong. You just need to give your authentic response to you. What does this mean? And I would like you to proceed with uh, the chat box immediately so that we don't waste time. We have 16 people that I see so far. Could you pl please proceed immediately and give your response to you? What does this mean? Do not take anything personally in the context of what we've spoken about with regards to your time, energy, and attention. Betty, uh, because anything people say to me is not about me, but all about them. So that is, Betty, that's the neutral, I'm um, just an encouragement, that's, that's a neutral uh, interpretation, but I want it to be something that, in what it means to you specifically, what does it mean to you without in, involving other people? I don't know, if preferably, do not have to mention other people, just so that it's, it's, um, it's I'm not, I'm just pointing you in a direction, I would like you to interpret it to you. There's no one else involved right now. It's just me. It's just you for you to me. What does this mean to me? This means and see if what comes authentically from you, particularly that doesn't involve other people. Eunice M says this means other people's opinions should not derail my focus. Uh, can you tr try again now with the, the insight that I have? I have uh, just given Shiro, it means I will not allow slippage of my energy into what is not building me. So in terms of, uh, um, as an example, what Shiro has done is what I'm looking for. It, it comes down to what you will think, what you will do, what you will say, how will you will carry yourself before we involve anyone else. To you as an individual, how will you carry yourself as a leader, as a role model, as a problem solver, with regards to not taking anything personally, what does it mean to you? What is the implication for you? It means I will, or I choose, or I am capable of, or I should, I, I can be open to, or that's that's the kind of thing I'm hoping, so that it becomes practical. Otherwise, we can continue having this agreement, and it really doesn't boil down to becoming practical in, in terms of how you operate day to day. Uh, Eunice Kuria, uh, it 
says it's not about me i would like you to flesh it out a little bit so that it has implications in terms of how you carry yourself or how you view yourself how you respond to to circumstances and it's mostly just centers on you gladys says it means personal focus dulls any distraction of other than the specific task at hand i like it if you can refine it if especially in your own reflections so that it has direct implications in terms of how you will operate today let's see a few more before we move on scholastica the scholastica says be the best in executing my intention by my own energy thank you scholastica mercy uh, mercy says to me it means i should always mind my business with laser focus my resources are too limited to mind other people's business like that a lot i should always mind my business if you can replace the word should and just bring it down to a specific action uh, when we set we do a daily reset because you can't you can't do a, you can't set intention for next week you set intention for today because you have control of this next 24 hours at least that is the expectation then tomorrow you do it again so that the word always sometimes tends to almost create uh, our mind doesn't like the word always it our mind wants flexibility so see how you can this is your authentic response and this is true to you just i'm just giving an encouragement to everyone see how to make it matter today influence your behavior today so that you can actually carry it and put it in one of your daily reset elements that we will do today. Mary Joy says, I'm entirely responsible of the level of energy I use to do all my tasks. That's beautiful. You are responsible. So in your daily reset, where can this fit in so that it can power the rest of your day? So we take this agreement beyond just being uh, some nebula statements that sound really beautiful to make it practical. Frida, to me it means I have done all there is to do with my time, my energy, and my attention. And there, whatever is done has nothing to do with me. I get what you mean. I like especially that first part. That you can measure yourself at the end of the day and see whether you did what you have stated in there. Betty says, I should save my time to do better things of higher energy and give attention to the highest level of integrity. I like it. See how else you can personalize it to yourself. Sylvia says, my time, energy, and focus is my business only. I love it. Florence, as a leader, role model, and problem solver, I have fixed time, energy, and attention to do that which draws me to my reality no room for distractions that is powerful and beautiful thank you florence shaline says i choose to respond appropriately to every situation rather than overreacting that changes the course of my day love it james says it means that regardless of what happens in my journey i will not be distracted in the face of both success and failure I keep moving. That is practical and I love it. Eunice K says, I will focus my time, energy, and attention to, to that which concerns me. That is beautiful. Thank you. Jacqueline, my energy and focus are on me, on my timelines strictly. That's beautiful. Thank you. Fanny says, it means taking responsibility for my actions, reactions, and finding peace within myself so we continue to work with this agreement do not take anything personally and continue reflecting about what does this mean specifically to you with regard to squeezing out as much play time as possible out of the day squeezing out as much play time as you can out of the day elevating your energy to the highest level you can intentionally selecting your new set point we are shifting mindset there is an energy set point you operate with. Can you reset it to a higher level? Can you select a new set point? And you don't have to worry about tomorrow. You just have to operate at that set point today. Because then you will have shifted your set point. 
that's a practical way to do a mindset shift, making it practical so that it impacts your day. We will proceed immediately to doing the declaration of intentionality. I will hide my video so you can see the whole statement. Please proceed with doing. Remember, we don't read it, we do it. And you don't have to wait for me. As soon as you see it, you start doing it. In the past, I felt powerless. I allowed external forces and limiting beliefs to hold me back. Yet today, I am seizing back my power. Today, I am determined to direct my intentions to master my focus, to take command of my actions. I am determined to shape my reality with purpose. I'm willing to carry myself as a leader, a role model, and problem solver in all situations. In all situations, I'm willing to squeeze out of today as much playtime as possible to operate at a high energy point as possible and to work with as much intense laser focused attention as possible. Of course, that for me means I will sleep and then when I wake up in the morning, I will do it. Otherwise, if I start doing it now, <laughs> I will not sleep tonight. <laughs> I will not sleep tonight. It's time for you to do your daily reset. Proceed with doing your daily reset. See which elements that you picked from the first part can find a home in one of one of this, particularly the intention. If it doesn't fit in the intention, just figure out a place where it goes into for you. Those who are new, if there's anyone who is new, the daily reset is those five segments, five prongs. What do you permit yourself to enjoy, experience, learn, feel? It just needs to be something specific that becomes your, in, your part of your intention for today. Uh, what is your intention? Is it to grow? Is it to learn, to evolve, to expand? Uh, if preferably don't expand physically unless you're working out. <laughs> What's your focus today? Is your focus insight? Is it discovery? Is it mastery? Is it evolution? Is it collaboration? Is it awareness? What are you claiming? Are you claiming growth? Are you claiming progress? Are you claiming presence? Are you claiming intensity? Are you claiming consistency? Are you claiming purpose? Are you claiming power? What are you claiming? What are you releasing? Is it self-doubt, self-criticism? That little voice that keeps whining and whining inside your voice all the time? Is it past mistakes? Is it missed opportunities? Is it uncertainty and anxiety and fear? Is it other people's opinions? Wang, 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 wang. Just shut them down. If you succeed, they will talk. If you fail, they will talk. If you don't do something, they will talk. If you do something, they will talk. If you are around, they will talk. If you leave, they will talk. If you don't come, they will talk. If you come, they will talk. If you drive a good car, they will talk. If you drive a bad car, they will talk. If you clean it, they will talk. If you fill it with full tank, they will talk. If it's empty tank, they will talk. It's if, if you drive by with your all your window panes closed, they will talk. If they are open, they will talk. If you put tint, they will talk. If there's no tint, they will talk. Wang, 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 wang. Just zip. I'm sorry. Today I am I am in uh, that energy. It's just just just. This is the one wall of Jericho that I don't want to, don't want to fall. Let, let the others fall, but this one I want it to just remain there, so that I choose what to hear, what to listen to. I seek it's I, I want to hear feedback that helps me grow, 
but those voices that have no value at all, I don't want to hear them. Then after this meeting, you will complete the remaining two components. You will run the tapes. Run the tapes of last week and the earlier days of this, this week. How well are you directing, mastering, and commanding your life? This is extremely important. Please do not skip. The awareness you build by doing this segment is extremely important. How well are you wielding your self-control, especially when things are not rosy, when you're tired, hungry, sleepy, angry, frustrated, and fearful, and uncertain, and self-doubt? And then, of course, you create your mindful day. You imagine that you've already lived this day and figure out if you had already lived this day and you lived it beautifully, magnificently, wonderfully, incredibly well, what five specific things will have happened that would have made it a beautiful day? If you can imagine it with your consciousness, you can leave it like that. And that's the goal. You do it so that you create it. Once you create it, it becomes real. Your name existed, your name was real to the rest of your family before you learned it. You eventually learned it, but as soon as your mom selected your name, I'm presuming it's your mom. If, <laughs> if your father selected it, he needed the support of your mom. The name, once it was selected, it was real. You didn't know it. Then eventually you learned it. Eventually you learned to say it. Eventually you learned to write it, but it was real. So the day, as soon as you create it, it is real. It's just waiting for you to live it. You, you are creating it at the deepest level, at the level of imagination. You are imagining it. The first word is imagine. This is your opportunity to go beyond implementation and unification and communication to create it, create your day. You see it, you see it in your imagination, you receive it emotionally, and then you go out and live it physically. So we are operating in a reverse. Instead of waiting to see the day at the end, we are like, oh, this is how the day went. No, you see it before it happens. And you receive it emotionally. Then you go out and, and leave it and make it real. We have one minute to spare. I absolutely committed we will finish on time today. I'm going to stop sharing and get one person's reflection this morning. And I'm going to call the lady with the vertical screen, Sylvia Sudoy. Good morning, Sylvia. Morning, Doc. Oh, yes. good evening, Doc. Morning, everyone. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Go ahead. Give yeah. us give us your quick reflection before we uh, head out. My quick reflection is interesting that this conversation today has everything to do with the reason why I joined the Momentum Challenge and now the Breakthrough Challenge. It's all about time, 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 time management and and where my time is going. And the conversation today about how many plays do I get and my struggle to try and get eight hours of focus time every day um, really revolves around how much can I pack into my work day so that I have as many plays as possible so that my wins, my, what did you call them? Um, uh, three or four moves so that my four moves or my moves that are going to bring breakthrough, you know, I have more chances to get to those moves. So uh, this morning's conversation has been really uh, resonant for me and um, I definitely can see a very big difference. Last year's me and today's me is very different as far as how I spend my time, energy and focus. And so, yes, today's conversation was just on point. Thank you. Thank you, Sylvia. That, that reflection brings me to something else that I should uh, already uh, have mentioned. So there are three levels of management. Three levels of management. There is time management, there is energy management, and attention management. Energy management. attention management. The first one is time management. Which of those three do you believe is the most powerful? Uh, 
I was thinking about it earlier and I, I was just, my thoughts were that they're very related, time, energy, and attention, because if you have, um, you have scattered attention, then the time that you're spending on anything is not the actual time. Like, like um, I was saying, I could be at work all day, but if I, my attention is all over the place, then I didn't get eight hours out of that work day. I got five hours. I, I tend to think maybe attention Absolutely. Affect Every, how much time you get out of it. Everything boils down to attention. So it's the time creates the platform. Time creates the platform. It gives you eight hours, right? Energy determines the level. At what level do you operate, right? Attention determines the depth. Attention determines the depth because attention is a filter. When you attend something if you are attending a meeting it means you are not outside playing you are not at, you are not at church singing you are not on the road driving when you attend something it means attention is the filter that narrows down to the 20 percent if you don't have a day to focus then your energy doesn't matter if you have the day to focus then now your energy matters if you don't have energy then your attention doesn't matter once you have energy now, you can talk about attention and they are sequential like that. I call them the T, the T recipe, T-E-A, just like T. Time, energy, attention. So you drink your tea, but you start drinking the tea with the first letter, time. Once you set aside an hour, then during that hour, if you are tired, it's not even an hour. You're going to doze off after 10 minutes. <laughs> so it's not an hour, <laughs> right? So you have the hour, then what level are you operating at? Nine or 10 or three or two? Then within that level, how deeply are you able to focus? Think about it. We don't have time to in, in additional, we have energy and attention, but we don't have time for an additional reflection <laughs> this morning. I uh, will wish you guys a great day. Please go back to the WhatsApp group and share your reflection. That will be the end of this daily reset and I will see you again tomorrow.